in the name of allah the most beneficent and the most merciful assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh how are you dear students dear students i welcome you once again in pakistan international school types virtual learning system for the session 2020 and this is biology class for second year so in today's lecture number 29 we will start our new chapter that is about behavior so dear students as uh, uh, we are going to start this new chapter new concept but that is very much uh, related or that is uh, about all the responses which we do in our daily life so somewhere when you think about it uh, we all are following these type of attitudes so we will uh, see in detail about different types of behavior in today's topic Uh, we will see the nature of behavior and innate behavior the first type of behavior so first we'll see the nature of behavior so let's get started so dear students uh, we will see about behavior in detail and uh, if we see the behavior is having different types innate behavior learning behavior and social behavior so we will see one by one in detail so if we just talk about behavior so behavior actually that is the scientific study of behaving of animals and that is named as ethology like this is also the branch of biology in which we study about the behavior of living organism not only of the animals but also plants and um, microorganisms all type of organisms okay so here if we uh, see two types of behavior innate behavior and learned behavior we will talk about uh, but the third one social behavior is also uh, being studied in this chapter so uh, behavior means any type of response or the entire pattern of response is made by an organism to the stimuli of its environment so this uh, all the patterns of responses that is known as behavior so that is very much related with the stimulus which we are going to receive so the stimulus which are uh, we are going to receive uh, that is received by receptors so that is all uh, like um, uh, we can say uh, that these there are a certain ways uh, like or certain uh, steps by which the behavior uh, uh, organisms can perform their behavior so um, like if we just talk about a stimulus their stimulus can be any type of uh, any type of internal or external stimulus or environmental stimulus can be and when this stimulus is received by receptors so the receptors can be cells tissues or organs so they are interpreted in the cns or central nervous system by ghrelin neuron and then from by motor neuron it gives messages to the effector it means that a response to the stimuli is being given now so from stimulus up to the response it is according to different stimulus we give a different response to the um, environment internal or external so that is actually very very important relationship between stimulus and behavior so stimulus can be anything which triggers a physical or behavioral change and plural definitely is stimuli so it uh, like stimulus can be irritants any type of irritants which irritates the body uh, postures movement or uh, physiologically or internally metabolically uh, disturbance and uh, that can be the five senses also sight sounds 
and a touch, smell, and some other sensation like taste, heat, cold sensations, and uh, pressure, pain sensations are there. So we respond uh, differently according to different stimulus. There are different ways of responses to the stimulus. So the response to the stimulus can be positive, it can be negative, or it can be ignored if it is not important. So positive reaction is that being uh, wants more or is attracted to the stimulus. So for example, a person loves after hearing a funny joke, that can be a positive response or a positive response can be, we are smelling uh, our favorite uh, food. So we can give positive response to that. Or that is called the positive reaction or positive behavior towards that. Negative reaction that uh, uh, is uh, like uh, oh, anyone or any being wants to avoid that stimulus, for example, like if uh, the person is facing a bad uh, odor or um, like a sour taste or uh, like rotten uh, food they are getting into their mouth so they are avoiding that stimulus that's why that can be the negative reaction as well as one more reaction can be a response can be that is ignoring like the person is ignoring uh, like uh, sometimes it happens the child ignores the parents uh, orders and the dog pays no attention uh, to the sounds which come from the television but kids just watch them um, uh, interestingly so that is uh, positive for the kids but ignoring for uh, the animals or dogs so stimulus can be uh, before the brain like it can be from the receptors it can be in the brain like we can we have studied uh, in the chemical coordination hypothalamus uh, performs that function as well as co complex interpretation in the brain can occur uh, due to um, like uh, receiving this uh, stimulus and then we can say that behavior is the result of stimulus plus response so behavior is having very, very deep relationship with the heredity, like heredity means with the genes, because heredity is a transference of characters from parents to offspring or the next generation. To, so which type of behavior we are having in our genes, we definitely uh, we go through uh, these behaviors in our lives. So um, gene play a role in the development of behaviors because the direct development of the nervous system is under the control of these genes. So nerve impulses, hormones, physiological mechanisms, any type of sensory um, like uh, receptors, they all are being under control of genes. So gene, the basic physical uh, unity of hereditary and uh, genes code for protein molecules and these proteins can be structural or enzyme or chemical reactions are going on. So this DNA or pr uh, presence of gene over this DNA that is having uh, like great a uh, role in describing uh, the behavior of any organism. So like members of a same species vary in expressions of certain behaviors because of variations in the genes and their behaviors have survival value as well. Like for example, there is a behavior of curiosity so that can be some organisms are more curious than others of uh, uh, like getting knowledge of um, taking information about different type of things and that is increases the survival rate of uh, 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 the organisms which are more curious so this all type of behavior mostly uh, depends on like then our nervous system and this pathway of the nervous system in which the uh, um, the receptors are getting the stimulus and then uh, this uh, 
message is going to uh, we can say the spinal cord or to the brain like cns and then we get uh, the response of that by our effectors muscles cells tissues or any type of organs so this is innate or that can be the genetically defined mechanism which performs different type of behaviors okay so um, now we will see that biological rhythms biological rhythms means we behave in biological manner or in our life we behave at our rhythmic pattern like biological rhythms are the integral part of every day's life of most of the organisms so they regulate most important functions in each organisms it means they define the behavior at a regular pattern so in plant circadian clocks control flowering a response to seasons and photosynthesis as well so what is circadian clocks we'll see in the next slides and uh, like in plants we know that there is controlled flowering like uh, in a, a specific uh, time period of uh, the day as well as of the season so plants flower and they do uh, Mm, they do response to the seasons also so in mammals circadian rhythm manage lots of different types of behaviors like sleeping waking feeding controlling um, different types of mechanisms they can be nocturnal or diurnal so let's talk about circadian rhythm but before going to the circadian rhythm we have to see biological clock because biological clock is actually that clock or that cycle which is present in our body that is not actually tick 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 cycle uh, clock but that is the mechanism which controls clockwise functions of our bodies physiological functions metabolic functions and lots of other processes on regular basis so if we just uh, go through uh, like our uh, our body or our uh, surroundings so we can understand that biological clock is that pattern of our body which moves again and again at the same period of time so we can say the exact nature of internal mechanism or that is called biological clock that controls such rhythms we can't understand them how it all is doing going on and it is an organism's innate timing device we can say like it gives a timing for every uh, process in the body so that can be said as a timing device for an organism so um, biological clock it is we can say that there are lots of uh, like processes which are going on and these are internal physiological systems that track the environmental rhythms according to the internal or external stimuli uh, stimuli uh, these biological uh, clocks a response okay so if we just take a remarkable timing system in our body local time of the day and uh, lapse of the time synchronized environmental cues under genetic control free running in the absence of time cues sometimes uh, like in the absence of this disturbance of the clocks so of the person going on freely controls over uh, biological rhythms and temperature control related to various disorders so all these type of um, functions or features are controlled by a biological clock in our body so if this biological clock is uh, under 24 hours so that is called circadian rhythms 
if biological rhythms are for 24 hours like per day cycle so that uh, we can say circadian rhythm circa means a circle so that moves in the circle in 24 hours like repeated pattern every day at the same time so if we just move on from uh, like after 12 o'clock in the uh, midnight so what we can see that um, uh, uh, at two o'clock the person is going on into the deepest sleep so that's going on on a regular basis and every 24 hours then at four o'clock lowest body temperature is there six o'clock when it is moving on next towards this so sharpest blood pressure rise when we are gonna get up so then melatonin secretion stops here melatonin secretion starts on for you as we know that melatonin controls our sleep pattern so highest alertness when we get up so that is at the daytime at 10 o'clock in the morning then uh, at um, like after 12 we are having best coordination among our uh, different activities and among our body then fastest reaction time is that um, between uh, 3 uh, 30 and more than this then uh, greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength we can get at this time like five o'clock and uh, between four to five highest blood pressure again that can be at after six then highest body temperature can be at seven o'clock then melatonin secretion gets started so that is actually most commonly present in lots of human beings in most of the human beings but there are exceptions also like some people uh, when they don't get sleep in the night time so this uh, cycle can be uh, like different in that or uh, like the sleep at daytime and then they can have proper active time in the night so circadian rhythm can be different in different people so circadian rhythm um, that can be diurnal nocturnal we are talking about 24 hours of the daytime or one day and crepuscular and arrhythmic so if we see here so diurnal means that um, when uh, the body is of different organisms like uh, perform their functions at different time can perform according to their um, physiological conditions so uh, if they are active during the day and inactive during the night time so like they um, perform their behavioral activities at the daytime nocturnal when they are active at uh, night time and inactive at daytime so that we can say owl bats and they perform this type of behaviors And then if we see uh, crepus, uh, crepuscular uh, behavior or rhythms, so that uh, the organisms which are active at dawn and dusk, dawn is the time from the uh, like sunrise up to the like complete uh, sunrise that is day, and dusk is between the day and night time when the sun is going to be set so this is the between time between the night and day and this is again between day and night so those organisms which are just uh, are very active just in the dawn and dusk time so they are called crepuscular organisms and very good example of that is fiddler crab and they are busiest uh, uh, like this is very big red crab and they are busy in dawn and dusk time arrhythmic uh, uh, rhythmic rhythms like rhythmic uh, there is no regular pattern like uh, we are having in circadian pattern they tend to be found there are changes in the microclimate are negligible sometimes these uh, changes are negligible uh, 
uh, in our uh, surroundings. There are some uh, like other rhythms which are going on monthly and sometimes annually as well. So more than the period of 24 hours and less than the period of a year. For example, if we just talk about monthly rhythms, so the very common example is menstrual cycle of a female and male monthly cycle, like they are having raised body temperature and mood and alertness at some time of the month. Then we are having uh, the other one that is called seasonal affective disorders that is called also circanial rhythm and circanial rhythm means they can also be said as annual rhythms or that is called annual annual cycles so circ means circle and annual means every year it repeats like we are having seasonal changing uh, as well as birds migration then uh, reproductive cycles of some animals and uh, hibernation of animals like they hibernate in uh, like frog hibernates in uh, rainy seasons every season and uh, after rainy season it just comes out so this all uh, just gives a different pattern of behavior so let's talk about the first type of behavior that is innate behavior. Innate behavior comes from the word innate. It means instinctive behavior or that is called in that is called inborn behavior. And these innate behavior are inborn behavior uh, that um, uh, that can be inherited or we can say the pattern of inherited preset behavior because that is not learned that is not according to the environment but that is the preset before the birth of a child of any uh, organism and that is inherited like that's why we are saying that genes and behavior is having very close relationship and they does not acquire any type of learning or practice so the animals does not know what to do in this behavior there it is done by itself so the pattern of behavior is due to the hard wiring of its nervous system which is inherited so as we talked about that nervous system is inherited and that is definite and specific in every organism so that is very strong wiring of which conduct this type of behavior so inherited or innate behavior, inborn behavior and evolved in the same way as any other characteristics like color evolved, like we can say that can transfer from one organism to another. So we can call them stereotyped, like uh, <clears throat> all performed in the same way each time, every time they perform the same <clears throat> thing. Okay, let's talk about uh, types of innate behavior. So first one is orientation behavior. Orientation behavior means the um, like uh, they can be oriented like the movement and that is also non and uh, okay. So orientation behavior in that we can see the first one that is kinesis. So when animals moves and changes its position and alignment relative to the point of specific direction and response to the stimuli, that is called behavior. Um, uh, which behavior? Orientation behavior, uh, like towards a, a specific direction. But if we talk about here kinesis, that is non-directional, means there is not specific direction. In orientation, directional is, but kinesis, there is no specific, no specific direction in which organism changes the speed of random movement, which help them to survive in the environment. So this type of behavior, uh, we can take the example, it is found in pill bugs. So they move uh, from dry to wet place. They move very fast. 
like they change the, uh, the speed of the movement they move very fast from dry to wet place because they love to stay in the wet place or shady place so they move faster from dry to dry to wet place so if there is like uh, if they want um, they are going to move dry place so they just keep st them stationary or they move very very slowly to just reach at the other place according to that requirement so um, now we'll see that first directional movement in orientation behavior so that is taxis it comes from taxis like the movement or that is also called the tactic response in the movement of all organism in a response to the direction or stimulus like a whole body is moving towards that direction so that's why it's called directional movement so certain organism move directly towards or away from the specific stimulus so that can be positive if it is towards that specific stimulus and that can be negative if it is away from their taxes so movement of an organism directly towards the light source is described as positive that is called phototaxis and other if they are moving towards some chemicals that can be chemotaxis if they are moving towards uh, water that's called hydrotaxis if they are moving towards air that is called uh, aerotaxis so we can take the example of euglena which shows positive taxis by moving towards a dim light and negative taxis before due to the intense light so, um, so that live in the dim light so it uh, just moves towards dim light its whole body is moving towards dim light so that is a positive um, taxis and if it is away from that that is negative taxis the second um, type of orientation behavior that is tropism tropism are growth movements uh, which are due to directional stimulus so plants respond to the range of different stimuli uh, that are around them in, in their immediate environment and that is the growth movements in taxis whole of the body moves but in um, uh, tropism growth movements is uh, towards that so that is typically in the plants so tropism is the response of directional stimulus so that is also directional um, orientation behavior so if uh, we can take the example of a plant if the plant uh, like we know that shoot grows towards the light so that is called phototropism and uh, so that is response to the light photo means light Tropos uh, tropism means movement so then we can see the hydrotropism when uh, the plants moves towards the light so which part towards uh, moves towards the light definitely the roots which moves towards the water here is water present so the root is moving toward that that is called hydrotropism and if we talk about geotropism geo means earth like soil so plants roots always move towards uh, the uh, the soil in search of water or uh, we can say the downwards uh, where the light cannot reach so if we just place the pot like this horizontally so we can see the roots we can see the roots move downward from there towards the soil toward the ground towards the gravity that's why it is called geotropism like response to the gravity then we can have as a sigma tropism that is response to the touch like when we touch this uh, any type of plant so they gets closer uh, their leaves gets closer so a very good example is mimosa or that is called touch me not and uh, but here we can say uh, some plants or some vines some creepers they need some touch or support for their growth as well as for movement uh, and for grow upward so um, they need support when they touch something it can be a stick it can be other plant tree or it can be a wall so they just uh, started to grow upward uh, with the touch 
so that is also called a sigmotropism okay so next type of innate behavior that is non orientation behavior non orientation behavior that is actually animals do not show particular movement in response to stimuli they are much more complex than orientation behavior these include reflexes instincts who consist of emotions and sentiments so they are not actually uh, the growth movement uh, but they are you know, the movement of which are innate and deeply uh, just which are in their reflex and which are in their instinct like re reflex is an automatic response these are the two types of uh, uh, non orientation behavior so we can say automatic response to any type of stimulus uh, that is a reflex and most of the time our nervous system respond to this type of reflexes for example pulling, pulling our hand away from heat and jumping at a loud noise and like we shout somebody to so somebody just get having shock with that one and for example if any food particle or water stick with our uh, throat or larynx so uh, it starts to cough that is in our reflex so it means nervous system is uh, uh, control this all process instinct means which is inborn inside um, uh, by which like you are inborn with that type of behavior for example building a nest of any um, like uh, which do all type of organisms do the same process they make their homes they make their nest and a suckling process like the babies uh, suckles mm, um, uh, female uh, to for a feeding purpose and um, the very good example of instinct is like that is referred to as a fixed action pattern and their very complex behavior pattern uh, like reflexes are inborn so uh, like for example you can see here um, like turtles just lay egg in the sand but after hatching from uh, the eggs the baby turtles move directly towards the water so that is in their instinct their reflex don't uh, doesn't uh, tell uh, this type of behavior to these turtles like that very good example of this is um salmon salmon is pacific salmon so what it does it lays we start from here it lays eggs in the fresh water okay so a male and a female lays eggs and male spawn over it like it releases sperms and uh, the eggs fertilize then eggs uh, fry hatch in the spring and it lives almost lives one to two years over there and then when it just changes into uh, smalls like a bigger fish uh, that moves towards the ocean in the salty water but when at the time of uh, again when uh, there's a time of um, uh, we can say the hatching uh, mm, sorry spawning uh, process so or uh, mm, that is called reproductive uh, cycle it's completed then it again come to uh, the rivers or fresh water for this uh, uh, for laying eggs over there so that is in their instinct to move like th uh, thousands of miles from rivers to uh, sorry from oceans to rivers and from rivers to oceans so in their way uh, in their migration lots of fishes are um, like uh, fed by different type of animals are captured like some are died and just a few can reach in the oceans and then again they can move towards the rivers and uh, we know that a uh, river flows towards the sea but when they move from oceans towards the river so uh, like it uh, means that they are moving against 
uh, this gradient like against uh, the movement of the water so they need lot of energy and in this way lots of fishes die in their path so dear students that's it for today i hope you understood all the behavior pattern which we have discussed today in that in or uh, innate behavior the first type of behavior we have discussed and orientation and non orientation behavior and its types and examples we have discussed here we will uh, see you inshallah in the next lecture wish you all the best allah